Hello, today I'm going to show you how to use the sapling tree generator in Blender. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go to preferences and go to add-ons and search for, I'm just going to search for tree, and you're going to want to check on this one that says add curve sapling tree generator. Since it's not in the um, default setup for Blender, you have to go and enable it, but it is included. You don't have to download anything. So once you do that, you can go to Add, and if you go to Curve, you'll see that there is an option called Sapling Tree Generator. So if I hit that, you see it has made a tree. Now the first thing that you do not want to do is you don't want to tap anywhere on the screen except for this little black box right here that's going to give you your options. Because if you tap anywhere, then it will cancel out the uh, tree that you're making and it will be stuck in that default pose. So you see you have a ton of options here to um, use on your tree. So I'm just going to go through a few of what each of these do. This one bevels the tree more, makes it smoother. Also one thing, these trees use a lot of polygons and things like that. So you probably want to keep that down. So if you get a curve resolution, you can see it kind of just... Actually, does this even do anything? I don't know what it does. I just know it just made my computer lag. I'm just going to turn that back, though. It looks like it smooths it out. And you see you have your handle top, auto, and vector. If you know what those two terms are, you know vector is kind of just resolutionless. So I guess that would work, too. But I normally just use auto. And you see there's all kinds of shapes for the tree. Like, you have a bunch of different options. Let me show you. You can see there's a lot of different options. And you have one that says custom shape, which doesn't really work that good on this. But you can see that you can distribute the branches like this with this slider, add rings to it. And you can see there's also a random seed so that you can generate random trees. But that's just the normal stuff in this. One thing that I really like, which I think is the most useful part, is that you can actually generate different types of trees. So you see they have one that says willow tree. Let me hit that. And you see it just generated a different tree than it was before. And they have a bunch of different options. You got one that says white birch. You got one that says small pine. Let me scroll down to that one. I use this one a lot. And you can see you also got those trees that have really long trunks. And a weeping willow. I use this one fairly often in my films. And a Japanese maple. This one is one of my favorites because it looks the most realistic without having to use too much geometry. But the next thing that you can do is once you're done with picking out what you want the tree to look like, you can go to this option called branch radius. And this is where you just edit things like the branches and how each of them work. You can see you can do things like that. I don't mess with this too much though. Then there's one that says branch splitting. That is just how many times the branches split off from each one. You can see how that works. You don't want to do that too many times though because it can add a lot more geometry than you need and end up making it take way longer to render. We're not really rendering, it's just that the computer, like the CPU, won't be able to handle it if you have too many limbs hanging off. So I normally use just enough that it looks good. And you can see they have one that says branch growth. This just makes the limbs and things like that longer. And all that pretty much does the same stuff until we get down to pruning. Now, this does nothing on its own. But if you go to leaves, this is where you add leaves at, because I know a lot of people don't know where the leaves are at on this. you got to check this box that says show leaves. Once you do that, your tree will have leaves. One really cool thing is that each of these little default tree types that it has created have their own kinds of leaves too. Like you see this one actually has the maple leaves. So that's one of my favorite things on this. But you can see right now it's set to... Let me just add a lot more leaves. We might crash. It's lagging like really bad. Here, let me set that to a number without scrolling it. Here, I'm just leaving it on 25 for the sake of the uh, tutorial. But you can see they have a bunch of different options here. Hexagonal, 
hexagonal, rectangular. Um, they just have a bunch of stuff. Normally the default is pretty good though. And you can see you can make the leaves bigger and smaller. This is lagging really bad because I have so many leaves on here. And the next thing that you can do is you can actually add bones to the trees if you want to animate it. I'm not going to do that. And then there's also an animation tab. But that is everything in the um, sapling tree generator. You see I don't have anything on the leaves right now. But the leaves are actually a separate um, object until you join them. So it makes it very easy if you want to like make the leaves have a separate material, which I assume you would. And then have the trunk of the tree be also a separate material. You can see it makes making trees very quick and easy. But anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye.